Okay, it looks like it finally arrived. Uh, this is a pretty cheap oscilloscope. I forget what I paid, maybe a hundred dollars for it, but it was uh, had a pretty nice bandwidth and it's portable. And I thought it would be good for experiments. It says oscilloscope on there from China. Who knows how much longer we'll be able to get stuff from China. With this trade war going on and this phony pandemic where the Communist Party that now runs America um, is going to tell us what's essential and what's not essential. Alright, doesn't that sound familiar? Who's, who's deciding what's essential and what's not essential? To me, this is very essential here. It's definitely not a, an American principle, right? It's not what um, this country was founded on. Let's see, we're going to need some... Um, yeah, because our country is founded on freedom, right? And human rights. Once you allow the bureaucrats to take away your freedoms, your human rights are going to be gone as well. Anyway. Let's take a look at this guy. This should be interesting. For all you mad scientists out there. Wow. I guess this is stuck too. Hmm. Okay, well, so the whole thing just came in a padded case, it looks like. There we go, look at that. Okay. Here's our O-scope. It's also inside of some kind of sticky case. Well, that's neat. It comes in a little protective rubber like a cell phone thing. Looks like you can hook maybe a USB up to it right there. Take a look at that if you can see that. Okay there. Looks like a USB and an on and off switch. There's holes in the case you can get to. And one scope lead. I'll put it back in there. And um, here's an O-scope probe. All wound up. Looks like it's a 1X or 10X. It's got a switch on there you can choose 1X or 10X. A little clippy thing. Most scopes usually have. BNC connector. And looks like a little ground lead. The other side of the scope. And here is our instruction manual. And I'll have to look through this. Oh yeah, that's right. It's 100 megahertz bandwidth. It's awesome for a portable scope. 500 mega samples per second. Um, me one mega ohm input resistance. Okay, we'll have to uh, test this thing out to see if it really lives up to our expectations. Because I have some interesting field experiments that we can maybe carry out with this type of device. It's going to be cool. Okay, let's take a look at this. Oh, I guess uh, looks like it comes with a micro USB charger cable as well. So, why don't we try to get this thing charging? We'll test this out. Should be interesting. Okay. Close this thing back up. Handy carrying case. Okay, so. We just received this guy and showed the op unboxing of it. And um, it came with this USB cable, micro USB, which I plugged into the computer. And there's a little port down here. So I was going to see if I could start charging this guy. Plug that guy in. And, uh, hmm, well, I don't see anything. I did say that if it didn't have enough current, you might need a higher current. Um, USB source. Let's fiddle with this. Oh, it's plugged in all the way. I'd hope there'd be signs of charging, but uh, I guess I'll just let it charge for a little while. If this doesn't work, I'll try plugging it into a different USB source. And we'll see if uh, 
Let me get this thing charged up and working. Okay. Okay, I've been letting this charge for quite a while now. Let me just pull this out of here, I guess. See if we can turn this thing on, see what it does. Oh, look at that. Very cool. Okay, we have an oscilloscope here. Let me, um... Let's hook up our probe and see. There's a BNC output on the top. And, uh, see if we can connect that in there. Okay. So there we go. Now we have our probe hooked up to this guy. And, uh, we have to fiddle with it a little bit to figure out how to uh, get this guy working. But uh, definitely should be a cool device to do some experiments with. Okay. Okay, so I was just trying to explore some of the capabilities of this uh, interesting little scope here. And it looks like we have these up and down arrow keys. And the up and down ones control the, the voltage setting here. Uh, the gra uh, volts for millivolts per gradical. It looks like it goes down to 50 millivolts and up to 10 volts per division on the 1x scale. And of course if you change it here to 10x, you should probably, there's a setting down here you have to tell it's on 10x. And then it changes that accordingly so that's 100 volts it goes up to on the 10x scale at the maximum. And if you put it down on the the 1x, let's switch this probe to 1x, then we can go down to, oh, it's the opposite of what I think, up is actually down. 50 millivolts is the smallest uh, setting in the vertical direction, and that's similar to my nano, uh, I guess it's not here, I have a DSO nano scope. And um, so the time resolution is controlled by the left and right arrows here. And it looks like we can go all the way down to 50 seconds. So it's like a chart recorder almost. It moves very slow. All the way up to it's one second, 500 milliseconds, 50 milliseconds, 2010, 5 milliseconds, uh, 200 microseconds, um, 10. 5 microseconds, 2 microseconds, 1 by 500 nanoseconds, 200, 100, 50, oh that's interesting, 12 nanoseconds, 6 nanoseconds, okay so it looks like 6 nanoseconds is the fastest scale, and for some reason it's picking up some signal, I don't know why, I have to figure out where that's coming from, because that's pretty weird, something giving off a high frequency signal or is that just something bogus in the scope of course I do have it on 50 millivolts per division so maybe it's just picking up its own oscillator or something I don't know okay so I did want to test this up to full frequency because uh, let's let's bring the divisions down oh when I go to 100 it goes away so maybe it's a bug in the scope I don't know that's pretty weird 100 millivolts, it is not there. Um, we should test this on a signal generator to see if we can get the 100 megahertz bandwidth that it's claiming. Okay. Very interesting. Okay, so I'm not sure. I do have some oscillators that go up to 100 megahertz. I'm going to have to find them. This one is a BK Precision and it goes up to 10 megahertz and we can put it on square wave maybe set it on the 10 megahertz scale and maybe we'll hook up I have the output here and I'll maybe hook it up to the uh, probe and see if we can see anything on our scope okay okay so I have uh, the output of our 10 megahertz generator actually it looks like it's set at 6 megahertz right now and uh, <clears throat> A square wave and that's interesting let's 
turn down the uh, sample rate and we'll increase the signal size so I can bring up the signal on the signal generator okay so it's supposed to be a square wave coming out of there I have it on the square wave setting 6 megahertz it's looking a little bit rounded off because of course you get that when you um, have extra inductance or capacitance it will round off the signal and I'm oh okay turning up the the output level here to make it a little larger here's the coarse frequency so let's let's sw sweep through the frequency a little bit okay and it's looking okay that's that's it double odd zero means it's at 10 megahertz that's nine megahertz there that's okay well that's basically 10 megahertz and it's looking pretty rounded up there so i'm not sure what the bandwidth means because it if it's really a hundred megahertz scope you should see a pretty pretty nice square wave there I would think so I'll switch it to oh my robot just fell okay so that's sine wave and that's triangle wave so it's looking pretty rounded so I'm not sure if I completely believe the bandwidth is a uh, hundred megahertz I have to find my hundred megahertz oscillator and see if we can measure a signal on that hmm. okay. okay I found my BK precision signal generator and here's our here's our uh, little handheld oscilloscope measuring the signal looks like it's we got it triggering I'm not sure how I set the trigger level yet I'm still looking into that and let's try varying the frequency so this is this is uh at the uh three to ten megahertz setting so this should be three megahertz right there and if we go up and i have this thing on full blast i have the no i guess i don't i had to turn down the the volume a little bit but it's on high filter okay and so let's see we said that was about three and so 10 is right about there and so if we look normally i define bandwidth as 3 db or half the signal height so it looks like going assuming that this signal generator is constant output which i can't guarantee it looks like we're going from about a factor of two just from uh three three uh megahertz to 10 megahertz Okay, so I would say that the bandwidth is probably just just uh, in that range is you know, probably somewhere around three megahertz. Let's let's go down in frequency. We'll go down to one megahertz. Okay, and the signal's even bigger now. And there's 300 300 kilo or yeah 300 kilohertz probably. Let's change the frequency setting. Okay, so there's 300 kilohertz, uh, three megahertz. Oh, I'm sorry. This this is three. That was one megahertz. This is three megahertz. So let's do this. That's uh probably 100 kilohertz, 300 kilohertz, uh, one megahertz. Um, 3 megahertz okay so from 1 to 3 the signals drop significantly 10 megahertz <laughs> so the, this, the 3db bandwidth I would have to say is somewhere between there let me let me boost the, the amplitude here and we will uh, increase the time scale okay so my personal definition of the bandwidth uh, 3 dB point would say it's about 3 megahertz, but we're still able to, if we boost the signal down here, the fine thing, we're able to measure signals up to, this is this is at the 10 megahertz setting now, we're at 10 megahertz, and uh, let's try sweeping it up to, oh look at that, we have a significant drop right around 
Okay, 10 to 35, let's see which scale is that. Uh, okay, so it's this scale right here. So there's 10, 20, blah, blah, blah. that's about 20, 22 megahertz. It's starting to drop significantly. Say 22 megahertz, that's 20 megahertz right there. Okay, so our signal is significantly dropping past but 20, 22 megahertz is very small at this point. Oh. Okay, and it could be partly, I don't, I don't think the output of this thing is completely flat, but probably the scope is not flat either. Let's, let's bump it up. Oh, let's see, so this is 32 to 500 megahertz, and we're not even triggering. Let me see if I can increase the time scale. 500 nanos. Wait, wait. We want to go to. Oh gosh. Look at that. I can hardly see it even. This is it. Oh, 32 megahertz. Where is that? that this is the top scale up here. Let's get this cable out of the way. So 32 megahertz. 35. I mean, I'm still seeing a signal, but it is. Oh, wait, wait. Let's. Let's boost. Okay, I bumped up the, uh, the scale on this, so we're going. That's the max scale there. So, 32, 35. Uh, is it still triggering? Doesn't even seem like it's changing. I don't even know if that signal's real. Jesus. averaging it or something. That's 32. Doesn't look like the frequency is really shifting as I bring it up here, so I don't even know if that signal's real. Let's bring the frequency back down here. Okay, six nanoseconds. Okay, so this is the 1035 mm -hmm. setting. I'm going to drop down a little bit because it looks like it's clipping there or something. The 25 nanoseconds per division. So there's 10 megahertz, 11, 12, 13, 15, 20, 20. Oh, see, it does some kind of weird jump there. What is that? Let me let me increase the the sa sampling rate. Maybe it was aliasing or something. Okay. So there's twenty. What the heck? Twenty-five. Thirty. Okay, it looks like the frequency is still going up. 35. I don't know if it's doing some kind of sampling or it's, it looks like it's getting some kind of ripples there. Okay, so that's at 35 megahertz right there. Okay. And let me bring it back down. I'm going to jump up to the 32 to 150 megahertz scale. And it's looking pretty weird. 12 nanosecond sampling. It, that uh, this signal doesn't look even real. Okay. Okay, so I bumped up the amplitude. 50 millivolts per division. And we'll try changing the frequency. And it doesn't look like the frequency is shifting. So I don't even know what that signal is. So... I would say anything above about 30 megahertz is unreliable and the bandwidth was what I say 3 dB bandwidth I would say would be about 3 megahertz or so the analog bandwidth so I would strongly disagree that this this is a hundred megahertz scope it definitely is not but um, you know it was only about a hundred dollars and it's uh, I guess it's pretty nice for taking taking around measuring things pretty handy lightweight uh, definitely a 
um, handy tool, I would say. But it's definitely not 100 megahertz. Anyway, very interesting, huh? This is Dr. Jane's, and thanks for watching.